Hey everybody, it's Andrew back with another budget sheet. This is a great budget sheet. It's super customizable. You can track your checking account, credit cards, savings account, everything down to the dollar. You get your savings, percent savings up here. It looks great too. I'm gonna to give you a quick example. Say that we used one of our credit cards and we're gonna customize these to say what they actually are for some gas. And let's say we spent $50. What you're gonna be watching here is you see, as I put $50 for credit card one, you saw the credit card, it changes the amount up here. And now watch as I select the category for gas, you can see that it changes up here. We spent $50. You can see it goes halfway and $50 remaining. Let me get rid of that and watch the gas category. You can see that everything changes. All you have to do is type in the date, the description, click what you used, and click the category. Now, some of you might be looking for some sort of template that can hook right up to your account. And I promise you that tracking this way is gonna be so much better for you. It helps keep personal finance super personal. So not only are you getting a good grasp on your budget, but without even realizing it, you're gonna slowly notice that you are just so much more in tune with what you're spending, where your money's going. Because at the end of the day, the important part with budgeting is making sure that you're really putting that money where you want it to be going and not just the random things. So with that being said, hopefully you're still with me. The most important part of this budget sheet, this first step, hopefully if you've already clicked to a new tab, my voice is still playing in the background. You wanna come back and you're gonna be clicking these three tabs on the bottom of your screen. Once you have all three highlighted in white, you're going to be clicking this down arrow and now hit copy to new spreadsheet. Now what you're doing here is you're going to be putting this spreadsheet and this template to your own Google account. This leaves the template nice and clean for everybody to use so that it doesn't get bogged down with people trying to edit the template itself. And now when you copy this to new template, it's hooked up to just your account and now nobody else can see it. I can't see it. It's private. You don't have to worry about anyone else having access to it. So what you can do is give it a name in the top right or top left, excuse me. And then now when you click that sheets button, you'll be able to go back to your, uh, your actual Google sheets home. You can see the budget that we just created. There's nobody else that has access to it. This is the template down below. It says ultimate budget. You can see that it's shared. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do this first step. Super important, because we're all about privacy, especially when it comes to finances. All right, so you're gonna be starting here in your starting sheet. What you're gonna to wanna to be uh, describing here is all the categories that you think you're gonna be using. You can break it down to as few categories as you want or as many as you want. Both ways work. People have success doing both ways. And then to the right, you're gonna be putting your planned amount for what you're gonna be spending. Uh, if you want to keep some of these, go for it. If you want to add some, go for it. Just make sure that you keep the actual template and these squares all the same. Just, just delete and add in as you see best fit. Um, and then add the amounts. If you don't know what amount you want, just put a basic um, amount in for now. It could be nothing and just get a feel for what you're spending. You want to get a good grasp on where your money is actually going before you try to make yourself spend a certain amount. So definitely just in the beginning, if it's your first budget, put any amount and don't try to stick to that amount. Just look at where your money's going first. And then once you've done that for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, then you can really figure out how much you should be spending in each category and where you can optimize. So from here, after you've done your categories of expenses and your planned amounts, you're gonna come down to your categories of savings. You'll notice on a couple of these, I have these gray boxes to the left. And what I'm saying with these gray boxes are you wanna do limited editing to these squares. So for this right here, I have savings. You're gonna to wanna to leave this as your savings account. There's a lot that goes into the formulas on the back end, and just having this block right here, say savings, really helps the formulas work or else you're gonna run into some issues. So that's gonna be talking about your regular savings account. You can just leave that right there. Now, when I talk about retirement and investment account, I'm not talking about a 401k that directly gets drawn out of paycheck. I'd say something more when you get paid and you have money in your checking account and then you're putting it out into maybe a Roth IRA or something like that. That's what you would be tracking because what we're tracking in a budget is money that's coming in and out of your checking accounts, your credit cards, your savings accounts. Um, so if it never really hits an account and it just gets automatically withdrawn to your 401k, you're not really going to track it on a budget. So say you just have a 401k for retirement, 
and you're going to get rid of that account. Sure, that works too. Investments, maybe like a taxable brokerage account. Um, you can rename it as you best see fit here and whatever amount you're planning on putting per month. From there, we're going to be going up to the forms of payment. Uh, you can be naming your credit cards. This is up to three credit cards. That's just how I have the template built. If you have more than three credit cards, say you have five or six, just shoot me a message, leave a comment, and I can try to get with you and work with you. But this is set up for just three. Uh, maybe you just have one. But if you need some help, feel free to leave a comment. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But what we're going to do is we're going to customize this and name it. Say we have our first credit card is Amex. So we're going to name it as Amex. Credit card two is going to be, let's say we have a Chase credit card. We use those for different things. And we don't have a credit card three. So let's just erase it. Just leave the boxes the way they are, though. No need to get rid of everything else. Just erase what's in that square. And now here's another gray one, pay from savings. You're going to leave that the way it is as well. What is happening right here is this pay from savings line is going to allow us a way to actually track when we take money out of our savings and pay for things. So that's a really important line. And there's so many hidden features in this template that you're probably going to use the budget sheet for maybe a month or two before you even realize all the different ways you can track money coming in and out of different accounts. So don't worry about that too much right now. Just focus on the basics, focus on getting your category of expenses, your savings, um, and some of your amounts. And then you can worry about stuff like paying from savings or even like cash withdrawal and deposit, being able to track cash that's coming in and out of your checking accounts. We're going to be able to worry about those in a little bit. So down here, we have our forms of checking account payments. So in these boxes right here, you're going to be wanting to put any way that you can be taking money in or out of your checking account. Some examples would be any apps that you have hooked up, maybe um, a, a Venmo or Google Pay, Cash App, something like that. Uh, not necessarily any app that you pay for because that's just something that's going to be getting drawn out of your checking account. I'm talking more about those apps that are built to work as a, a payment systems. So um, Venmo, Google Pay, things like that. So what we're going to be doing, let's just put in Google Pay. Uh, in the verbiage that I'm using, checking transaction, I'm using that as a different word for, say, direct deposit. I'm just saying that anything that's getting put into my account or getting withdrawn from is kind of a tra transaction happening in my checking account. So that's kind of my core um, verbiage for saying, hey, this is coming into or out of my checking account. I just like to use the word checking transaction. You can make that sound a little bit better or choose the word you wanna see best fit for that definition. And then down here we have our debit card and writing checks. That's a way that it's gonna come out of our checking account. Uh, cash withdrawal deposit. So you go to an ATM, you're pulling out cash. This allows us to actually track that as well. Down here, we have more categories. So our income, you're going to want to leave that as income. Don't touch that. And then now here we have our credit cards. We can customize this. This is going to allow us to track when we pay off these bills. So again, we just, we're just we going to say we have an Amex and a Chase. How about that? And then we don't have a third credit card, so let's get rid of that. And now down here, we have bank transaction. You're going to want to leave that as well. That's an, another method that you're gonna see in a little bit of how we can track some cash uh, payments. All right, so this is set up the way that we want it to be set up. Don't worry about this formula sheet. And we'll just go over to template. What you're gonna notice is it's gonna be set up the way that you have described it with your planned amount and your line items, but there's gonna be some big gaps. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making this just look a little bit prettier by deleting some rows. Now, what you have to be careful of when you're deleting these rows, we have some other trackers here on the right side, and we don't want to delete a row that would contain one of these trackers. So if for some reason the row covers one of these trackers, we're going to just try to move it out of the way for the time being. So let's just move these guys a little bit out of the way. I'll show you. Google Sheets makes it super easy to just move cells around without actually moving the contents of the cell. So we're going to line or we're gonna take line 14 to line 17 because those are blank. And we're gonna click the side and delete rows. All right, so that's deleted. You'll notice that this graph right here, it gets a little messed up. So you're just gonna take this bottom line, find the bottom of the graph and drag it up to total expenses just so it lines up. All right, 
now we have another few rows right here that are all blank that we're going to want to get rid of just to make them look pretty. But you'll notice if we were to try to delete this line, it would delete some of these rows. So let's like what we talked about earlier, I'm just going to highlight and drag those out of the way. All right, now we're going to be deleting this row. And we're going to be deleting these two rows. Delete rows. Cool. Again, you have these graphs that get a little messed up, but that's all right. And we're just going to be dragging them down. So there you go. That's going to be your basic template. We're still got some work to do over here, but this is what it's going to look like. And it looks pretty good if I can say so myself. So we're going to drag this back down just to make it look nice. Um, now what you'll notice too, is we didn't have a credit card three. So we're going to want to get rid of that. And so what we're going to be doing is you're just going to hold shift and select these three cells. Oops, sorry, hold shift and select the three cells from savings. And we're just going to be dragging those up to where that credit card three is. So now credit card three is just gone. And we just have our savings checkings. And you'll notice sometimes that the formatting gets a little weird. So you can see that the lines aren't outlined. So we're just going to highlight those cells really quickly. Up here, you have borders. We're going to select all borders. That just makes it look a little bit better. All right. Now we're set up well for success at this point. Uh, now from here, I really just have to teach you guys about the actual budget sheet. You're going to learn a lot on your own, but mostly we're going to test it out and see, say if we we're going to be writing a check for rent. So I'm going to say I'm using check for rent. Again, over here, we have our previous month total. So you're going to put in your previous month total for your checking account. Oh, I almost forgot too. You're going to want to change these over to what you're calling credit card one and credit card two. So we're going to say Amex and Chase. There we go. Um, previous month totals, we'll load those in. Say there was a um, $400 balance on our Amex and maybe a $300 balance on our Chase. And then we had $1,000 in our savings account. And also we had $1,000 in our checking. That's just what we're going to say. You guys can fill that in uh, based off your account statements. But back to our example, we have our date. We're saying we're paying by check and then we're paying for rent. So watch as everything changes. We're going to say, let's say we spent 1,500 on rent. And then we're going to put the category as rent. You'll see you went over 500. So we only had planned $1,000 for rent. You can see it's minus 500. So it's telling you, hey, you went over on this account um, or this line item. You'll also notice that your checking account went below. We only had $1,000 in there and we sent out a check for 1,500, whoops. So that's not good. Your expenses are up by 1,500, but let's say you have a roommate. That would be awesome. And you guys split rent. And um, let's say that he likes to pay you off of Google Pay. And um, that's just how he sends you his money for rent. So let's say rent money and he gives you 750. So that's gonna be money that's coming in. 750 for rent. Let's put that over in the rent category. Now look at that. Your expenses are only 750. You still have a little bit of breathing room. Um, you actually do have enough in your checking account because he paid you 750. And you can just notice how everything changes with you. It's really customizable. It really works well. And now once you have this set up, you're going to be able to use this template for all of your months. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to keep your template clean. Let's erase everything that you were just trying and experimenting on. What you're going to do every new month is you're going to take the template and you're going to hit duplicate. That's going to make a copy of the template. And then you're going to click these down arrows and you're going to click rename. So let's call this uh, November of 22. And you'll notice now then I'll start, I'll do 11-1 form of payment. Let's say it was just, um, we got paid. So I'm, I'm going to put that as a checking transaction because it's direct deposits transacting into my bank account. Let's say uh, payday, that's always good. You earn say $2,000 in the category, we're gonna say income. So there you go. You're getting paid $2,000. Your checking account has gone up by 2,000. Your income's up by 2,000. Um, and you can track for the rest of the month in November. And once you're done and you're moving on to the next month, you're gonna then go back to your template. Again, you're gonna duplicate 
and then you're going to rename. So this will then go into December 22. So one cool thing that you can do with this Google Sheets is you can hide these other sheets. So we can hide formulas, starting sheet, and we can even hide the template sheet until we need it next time. Um, so then you'll have all of your months and every time you go through a month and you're done with that month, you can then hit hide and then uh, you'll just have your, your most recent month. And this is how you're going to want it to be set up usually when you click on the link. And I will show you now how to make this an app on your phone. So you can click a link on an app and it'll just pull right up for you. So I'll pivot over to my phone and here you go. So here we are on an iPhone and what you need to do first is just download the Google Sheets app. From there, you're gonna log into your Google account. You're gonna find where your budget is, your personal one. Click the three dots to the right of that budget. Click copy link. Then go and find the shortcuts app. It should be downloaded on an iPhone, pre-downloaded. Click in the top right, the plus sign, name, this new app, I'm gonna name it as a budget sheet. You can just call it just budget if you'd like. I'm gonna change it to green and then change the glyph to the money sign, just so I know what I'm looking at. And then click add action and type in open URL. You see open URL, click that. And then in the URL space, you're gonna paste what you had copied from the Google Sheet. Now, the only change you're gonna to have to do is erase HTTPS, and instead we're gonna type in Google Sheets. So just like that, Google Sheets instead of the HTTPS, and click Done. Now you have the square with the arrow pointing out of it in the bottom. Click that, and now click Add to Home Screen. And this is what the app is gonna look like. Click add in the top right. And now go back to your home screen and you can see there it is. There's your budget sheet. The first time that you click on it, it's gonna ask you to allow it to open it. That's just the first time, click allow. And then something else, so there it is. It just opened it by its own, on its, uh, on its own. And uh, you'll notice too, the first time that you open it, you click these drop down arrows. They might not load for a second, but um, the more you use it, the more it'll, it'll know what it's uh, loading. So super easy to use on a phone. Uh, the drop down arrows are really easy to click. There's a nice interface on Google Sheets, the app. Uh, the categories are really easy to choose from. It can be a really quick way to log on the go for your budget. So you don't have to rely on always having a computer. And again, if you just have the app right there, you can put that on your home screen. Every time you click it, it pulls you right up. You still have the month that you're talking about on the bottom side. And here in a second, you can click those three lines on the bottom left and you can see all your hidden sheets that we had just talked about. So you can go back, you can look at your old accounts, you can pull back up a new template and that's how you do it on an iPhone. So with that, thank you guys for watching the video. If you do have questions, leave a comment. And if you're looking to learn more about budgeting and just personal finance in general, I can't recommend enough. Go over to Spotify or wherever you get podcasts, listen to DIY Money. I'm not affiliated with them, but I think it's a great resource for anybody starting out. So go over there, DIY Money, check it out. Uh, they'll teach you all about budgeting and you can get more into depth, but this is a great place to start, a great way to track your expenses. Uh, I hope you guys all have a great day and a great rest of the year.